Alright guys, what's good? Fury Fire here, and today I've got a match between Shimba Abel versus Yobin playing as Rai. And I spoke about uh, Yobin last match, and you know, he still remains to me the most entertaining Rai in the world at the moment. Just crazy mix ups, does really balls out overheads constantly, just ridiculous play, and somehow it all works and comes together. And uh, this is going to be a play-by-play -play commentary because I want to get to the root of the reasoning why this guy still wins with his ridiculously unsafe and crazy strategies. And uh, let's get straight into it. Uh, this matchup is typically pretty difficult for Ryu. It's like a six-four. It's not. It's not ridiculous. Um, okay, so let's slow it down from the get-go. Really. So Yobin go starts out the match uh, with jabs, which is quite surprising. But he knows that it's going to be uh, Abel's stand short, which is typically a poke that you use to beat Ryu's crouch forward. So really smart stuff, just walking up. I mean, there's nothing Abel can do that's that scary from this sort of range. Like he's looking for his stand short and forward, forward, which you know both get beaten out by jab and. Yobin could have com uh, comboed into a sweep here, but that's a very hard hit confirm. And he starts out with a quite a ballsy jump, and I kind of like that because you, Abel has good anti airs. I, I think it's a common misconception that he doesn't, but Yobin kind of just lays it all on the table from the get go, and then go walks up and goes straight into the low into the sweep, and he gets the untackable knockdown. Now he's going to have a mix up. And this is what's really interesting. His jump-ins on his safe jumps are actually uh, mid-punches. And what this does is it means that the able player, if he backdashes, which, because he hasn't got meter, is his only option, he's going to get launched into the air and he's actually going to be in a jugglable state in which he can combo after. So it pretty much, at this stage in the game, in this meter state, it shuts down every single one of Abel's options. On top of that, because it's two hits and you have to block both those hits high, what often happens is people block low too early because they're so used to blocking low after the jump roundhouse or jump forward. So very interesting adaptation there. And I like that. I like the sort of little shimmy forward he does before he goes into the frame trap. And, you know, that's incredibly gutsy. Dash up, EX fireball, you know, that's... That's next level sort of stuff there. He knows that Abel's got no options. I mean, what's he going to do against it? And he kind of missed his follow-up. He could have hit a Shoryuken after it, and it would have done fat damage, but unfortunately he misses it. And that's going to sway the favour and the momentum of the match into Abel's favour, meaning he gets the untakeable knockdown and he gets a mix-up. It doesn't go for it. And uh, that's quite interesting, to be honest with you. Uh, he does a wheel kick here, which I... You know, it's very well spaced, and I think it's quite a smart choice. Puts a little bit of pressure on Ray, and kind of shuts down a few of his options. And then he gets a cross up, and uh, Yobin just—you can see here on the right that he's just churning out that DP in case the able player goes for the tornado throw, which is a really, really viable option in this situation because it would have thrown Yobin back into the corner. And uh, another thing about doing DPs like that is it sets in your mind that he's willing to just churn out a DP and you have to have that in your mind constantly when you're playing a mix-up character like oh he can just do it he's willing to just uppercut me and that's a fantastic thing to set in the opponent's mind because it's going to make them kind of stutter a little bit and slow down in their gameplay and maybe not begin their flow which all like mix-up players like to do they like to start their flow get the knockdown go for a mix-up and just keep going and keep going and if you stop that flow with a dp he's then going to start blocking on your wake up and you know that gives you an opportunity to get out so i think it's a good idea to set that precedent versus rush down characters like makoto and abel very early on and uh yeah, I mean, he does it once again here with the Ultra. I mean, that's a ridiculously gutsy move to just wake up Ultra. But I don't think it's as stupid as it looks because obviously it's not going to work. He's going to reaction Ultra it back because, you know, you've got like half an hour of freeze time on Ultras in this game for some reason. And, uh, you know, but 
he's now got he's got to have it in his mind to be scared. So he gets a sweeper, a wake up sweep, which is nuts, and uh, tries to go in for that mid punch once again. He really doesn't want him to back dash. He wants to continue his pressure. There's a very gutsy uh, focus. It dashes forward and goes for the throw. And uh, it's quite rare that Arayu will dash forward after his focus because it's not really safe. And versus Able, the risk is huge because you can just get tornado thrown and there's nothing you can do about it. He doesn't option select his mid punch. And I don't personally use mid punch as my safe jump option. I normally go for roundhouse and then option select into a throw, which nullifies the roll. I'm not actually certain whether you could option select it with the mid punch due to being such a funky move, but it would make sense that you could. And here you go, that's what I was talking about earlier. Like, Abel does have anti air options, and they're pretty fucking good. They work, and you can cancel it into a roll, which leads into a mix up. So, you know, don't think you can jump at Abel for free. It's certainly easy to jump at him on wake up once he's not got meter, but as soon as he gets it, and if it's from a distance, you know, you've got to be scared. You know, I've been really trying to push him into the corner using that stand jab and lots of VX fibers. And there we go, that's what I was talking about. You cannot backdash if a Ryu is doing that. And it's, you know, it's very, very smart for Ryu players to start using it on people's wake up. Because there you go, it puts you in a juggable state, it gets EX fireball, and uh, it does a focus for some unknown <laughs> reason. And this is where it gets funny. He does one overhead, he does another one, and he, when he jumps, if you jump out at that sort of time, Rai's going to recover before you hit the ground and he's just going to DP you for free. So, hits DP, goes for another overhead. And this is, I mean, it's talked about a lot. David Serlin loves talking about Yomi, but this is a classic example of it. And simply break down into, he's not going to overhead again. He's already done it twice. He's done it three times already in like, you know, a space of five seconds, in game seconds. He wouldn't overhead again. That would be ridiculous. Why would you keep doing something? But he just keeps doing it. And he keeps doing it <laughs> until he starts reacting. And it's not actually that hard to react to. But it kind of shows how mindfucked you get from getting hit by that overhead. And I think everyone will admit. When you get hit by Ryu's overhead or just overheads in general. It kind of takes you back a little bit. Because you can react to it quite easily you know if you've got decent enough reactions so when you get hit by it it kind of messes you up and you can see he's still going for it and it's kind of scary for Shimba to kind of realize that he doesn't give a fuck he's just going to go for it and that's that's beautiful right there i want to go back to that uh he starts using the standing jab once again as we spoke about to beat out that stand for uh stand short and forward forward but he's just outside of the range of the forward forward and he throws an EX fireball because what's Shimba going to do? He's got an EX roll which will get him out clean but he thinks that Yobin's just going to keep going for jabs and his other option is using an EX change of direction but EX fireball will go through that and uh, this is something I've seen Yobin do quite a lot he likes to jump in jabs which it makes total sense to me because there's so little block stun that the throw is near impossible to react to it's just kind of a guess and when you land you could also do a dp or something more risky but in that situation abel's got loads of meter you're not really going to risk it that much and uh just commanding play there from yobin really really commanding the scary stuff and the ceo is going to start out and once again he's just going in and he's jumping and showing that he doesn't care doing taxis from that sort of range is really risky but he does it anyway and uh just yeah, things like that. Empty jump into throw. Like, you don't expect it. And having that sort of thing in your arsenal where they just don't think it's going to happen is really crucial because although, like, you know, it's not always going to hit and sometimes you'll get punished, like, like I've been reiterating over and over again, it is that idea of they don't care that is so crucial when you're playing aggressively. You have to make them think that you're willing to do anything. And it's going to really make them hesitate. And uh, there we go. The Tatsu there, which catches back dashes and would have cut, caught an EX change of direction. And uh, Shinbei was just going for the wake up. Tornado throw, a very, very viable option. And uh, rolls in, goes for a mix up, but uh, he doesn't do any meat either, which that's kind of an example of the seed that's been set in his mind. He delayed the meat, he delayed his uh, first attack on 
Jobin's wake up because he didn't want to get DP'd and by delaying it you would catch a reversal and you would have blocked it so instead he just goes for a later attack and Jobin just neutral jumps it because he can because it's not a meaty so you can jump out of it it's a fantastic play obviously well not obviously but he gets punished you know he lands and then Chimba Abel goes for his command throw and he's starting to do mix ups and you can see that Chimba Abel's definitely not bad like I don't want to give the illusion that Chimba Abel's in any way bad like he knows the spacing there like he walked out of the uh, crouch roundhouse range which is something that you have to be able to do when you're playing against a Ryu knowing all the ranges and there you go once again going for that jump in medium punch goes for a frame trap and tries to do another one but it's a little bit too delayed I know he's trying to delay it so Shin Babel's going to think oh fuck he's going to throw he's going to try and crouch tech it which he did in that example and Yobin will hit the crouch medium punch but unfortunately that time it didn't work out and there's the role that you have to be worried about whenever you throw a fireball versus Abel and that's what makes this matchup quite difficult for defensive rows and uh, uses that uh, I think it stands it might be stand roundhouse I'm sorry I can't remember with uh, Abel and it moves you in a little bit closer so it puts a little bit of threat on where you can in a range where you can get a tornado throw but Yobin smartly just jumps out and uh, that's one thing about the Tatsu is it changes your art quite a lot and it slows down your jumping so things like uh, Crouch Fierce which is a very common anti-air to use with Abel it will sometimes whiff because you'll do it too early it's much safer to just go for the crouching medium kick and then try and get a uh, sort of pressure string. And that's one thing that Abel has that you can wake up with. It's probably better to do a tornado throw, but uh, he goes for the EX change direction, which has armor, which is great. Yobin, once again, using that jab. just like, And he does it when he's not even in a range where he can hit the jab. Like, you know, Abel's not got a limb that's going to reach that far. But just showing him that he's gonna do the jab makes him go all right i can't do stand shorts and that means that yobin's got the opportunity to throw crouch forwards because if abel doesn't use stand short then ryu's free to just use crouch forwards constantly and that's ryu's best poke like you know clean best poke and he uh i'm guessing that wasn't meant to be a dp but i think we've all done it before and uh yeah that <laughs> i mean that sucks for yobin uh, really smart play there by Shinpei Abel. He just he had the composure to do the ultra, which I never have the composure to do, and I think a lot of players don't. Where you're kind of not expecting something to go that drastically wrong. I mean, Yobin should have won that, but input shortcuts mess everyone up. It's unavoidable most of the time. Um, yeah, like I just I love how Yobin plays that matchup. It's really really interesting. I mean, you can play defensive versus Abel, but Abel's got moves to get in. I mean, they're not always the best, but he can do it. And Yobin chose to instead go for this like sort of crazy rushdown style and make sure that Shimba wasn't willing to do loads of mix-ups and go in like really aggressive, which is the scary factor of Abel. It's his aggression, his ability to hit confirm off a of forward forward. You know, things like that are what makes these characters really, really terrifying in these sorts of matchups. But Yobin shut all of that down just by using, you know, really smart pokes like stand, short, uh, stand jab and using jump in uh, medium punches. Stuff like that is it's really crucial that people have that in their arsenal. Like even if it's not your go-to button or your go-to attack or way of playing, you have to be able to switch it up and like kind of change the momentum to your favour and then set it in their mind that they're they've got to be scared if they get the knockdown you're going to go in and you're going to get the safe pressure and then you might get out or you might continue your pressure like you just have to be able to mix up your game styles not just moves you use and uh, I hope you enjoyed that guys I don't know whether you lot like play by play commentaries but everyone seems to be into the wee section I have at the end of uh, the normal commentaries and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed guys and I'll see you soon